In this video, we start fabrication of a video game inspired electric go kart. We get enough completed to allow us to roll this thing down a hill to test out the steering, suspension, and overall ride quality. I wasn't going to post a video until I had the motor on and we could actually show the thing working. Being that this is the first go kart I've built, if you guys have any suggestions on something that's obviously going to kill me when I do hook a motor up to it, I would love some pointers. <laughs> I was helping cameraman clean out his garage when one of the things we were throwing away was this old trampoline he had. As the parts were getting thrown on the ground, I was like, you know what that looks like? That looks like a go-kart frame. Specifically, a Mario Kart style go-kart frame. So then we were like, well, we need to make a Mario Kart style go-kart. So I've ordered to make it as complicated as possible. I got a steering system. That's not complicated. But I decided to put French shocks on the thing. I just got this little set off Amazon. They're probably terrible and not appropriate for what I'm going to do, but I'm going to try. First thing I've decided is to make these four pieces. So I made four pieces just like this. Watch the process. And I'm going to attach those to here because these things are like flopping all around everywhere. Then I'm going to do a beam that connects them on the front so they're in the right position. I'm actually going to set up the position of the front wheels, the shocks, the rear wheels, rear axle, and angle iron because I got a bunch of angle iron. I don't really know how to weld. I mean, I made this thing. I welded that all together and it hasn't fallen apart. Going to weld this together as a frame to get the size. And then we'll start adding the pipes for additional structure support and to make it look cool. All right, guys, what you are about to witness is some very, 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 very amateur welding. So yeah, don't judge or do judge. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. That might be pretty good. Man, I, I, I might have to cut, look at that. I might have to cut those off, but that is actually where I want it. I get this arm straight and then get this arm straight. Can I still fit my feet betwixt that? Actually, look, when you pick that up, that goes out. So I need it a little wider than that. Okay, so now they need to go a little wider. Burn, burn. I'm going to measure, cut, tack the bar into place, and then check it all on the ground. Butimus Maximus. Oh, I forgot to hit record on me welding this together. So you guys just go watch a uh, a master welder on YouTube and just imagine that that's what it's looked like. So now my feet will go between here. Somewhere foot and gas pedals will be. Then the steering wheel will stick back here. Maybe showing too much leg for this video. So I will probably have to cut those little tabs off. This is the rear axle. This is going to be electric. I don't know if I told anybody that. That giant thing is a 72 volt battery pack. Oh! And it's gonna go roughly under the seat. So that is being represented by this majigger. So right there, sit like that, brakes like that. Oh yeah, there we go, that, that actually feels pretty good. The next point I'm gonna make is the uh, the front support for the steering rack. I'm probably doing more metal than I need to support the steering column, but the whole idea is every little brace I add just stiffens it up. This one's kind of up above the lower frame so I can still get to that bolt. I tacked on that brace and that brace. Ta da! So that is directly in this little, uh, little spot, holds that right in the center. And I've ordered little U bolts, saddle U bolts. And they'll go down there and they'll come across there and that'll hold that. All right, guys, for my steering wheel, I ordered this kit off of Amazon. Part of the kit comes with this and these bearings. Well, some of the kits had this little metal sleeve and this one was cheaper, so I, I didn't even think about it, but the metal sleeve would have been very useful. The metal sleeve goes around here to support the bearings and it gives you something you can weld to. I got a piece of pipe, cut it to length between those two spaces and I took my little metal lathe and I was able to get out a, a little bit of a path for this to sit down in. Spend that $10 to get the one that comes with the pipe. So I'm gonna show you how I did this on the other side. What I found works is if I do that and lock it down and then tighten this and then move this out of the way, it spins pretty true. I'm pretty sure this side is the cutting surface. I'm cutting on this wall and having it spin um, that way. And then I just kinda go in a bit 
and done. I didn't video as much as the lathing as I should have because this fell off. It devolved into me cussing. Then the camera fell over. I got it. My tolerance is better than theirs. Each side of that, there'll be a little ring thing holding that. So that shouldn't be able to go anywhere. All that to save um, $10. So just buy the $10 piece. All right, a cross member's gonna be down in there. And then another one of these will kind of come up like this and cradle and kind of cradle this little thing I made. I'm gonna go ahead and make the piece that goes betwixt here. Have you guys seen my saw? This is a little evolution. I got this because of Jinjian. He's a awesome fabricator. It's gonna get loud. Safety first. There's the little cross member I was talking about making for the steering rack. And now hopefully it's permanent with a bunch of blobs in place. Okay, I wanna work on this back end. So these, these are little weldable brackets. I want one right there. So the way this bracket work, you put the bearing in between here and then this squeezes it. I can have it in on the axle and it'll slide in here. So what I need to do is get this exactly where I want it. This angle iron has a little curve right there. So if I can grind that a little flat, I could get that to sit right up against it. I'll weld it in place. Then I'll drill out that hole and also I'll cut out that little U. I'm going to do the other side. You don't have to watch that. That took 13 freaking minutes. All right, I got both of these on. And as you can see, I kind of made a cage around it. Now the back end is pretty secure. So I'm gonna try it all in because I can't stand it. I gotta do it. I'm just gonna kind of loosely put them in and then I'm gonna stick the axle through it to see if it all fits. And I'm leaving the front open so I can actually slide these on and off without taking the axle apart. This is gonna be real tempting to put some wheels on this thing and see if I can roll it down a hill. All right, that's nice. Whee! Yeah, that feels pretty good. All right. All right, go-kart pedal time. I got these, which were called um, vintage go-kart pedals. Just wanted something simple. I might end up fabricating my own where I want them. It looks like they're supposed to kind of attach on the bottom, and they sit kind of upright. So actually, right there is where I want them. Doot, doot, doot. That is how far out they go. So I need... A piece of metal that'll come out and hold them up right there. The outside one will go right there. The outside one will go right about there. Right there. I'm gonna drill some holes and put this on and if it doesn't work I'll be angle grinding it off. But that's kind of the position. I don't I guess that's right. So do, do. they don't bounce back up because there's nothing tensioning against them. But you can see how I got it attached. I just Welded these little pieces onto the front of that. I spaced those how it looked like it should be. I got some stuff and I made some stuff. That's my motor. This is from Electro and Co. Electro and Co. Yeah, that's from, uh, I heard of them about because of a uh, grind hard plumbing. I think this is the same motor they used. Actually, it's the next step up for their, um, when they made that, uh, little power wheel thing. This is the controller, throttle, a little display. Got, I got a seat, but I wanted one that's kind of high back that I could try. So this is what I've been working on. These are in place. That'll hold the uh, steering column at the bottom. So I made this. That's going to go there. But what I have to do, I have to find out if there's enough room for my feet to go between there. To strengthen all this up, I'm going to cut a piece of this angle iron and put it in between there. But look, I don't like that. That's a little too tight. But yeah, I don't I don't want to hit a bump, and every time I hit a bump, I hit that. I'm going to attach these with this here. That way it keeps the spacing good, I guess. And then I'm going to cut it and then build a flat wall, and then I'll arch up and to keep it supported. So now those hold that up. Before I start chopping, I'm actually going to see if this sits where I want it to. Ha! It works. It's off the ground. I don't know. Did I do it right? But look, it's got a little bit of springiness. Let's see if I can sit on it and it holds me. Ugh. All right, I'm sitting on it. Ooh, it rolls. Can't do too much because the wheels aren't actually attached in the back. This is the curve piece I'm going to use for the top of the over my feet. Look, I made these marks. This is how far apart they are. So I basically want it to sit flat. Here I am drawing lines. Do you guys like lines? Okay, so that's what I got to cut. 
structure, structure. That's the thing I just made. You can see the curve on the top, so that provides more space for my feet to go through. I also added the little, that little triangle brace in there, so that's a lot stronger. I would get closer, but if I get too close, you guys could inspect my welds, and I don't want that to happen. I did finish this, which is the, this is where I want the chair. Now that I have the, the support done, I'll bolt the chair into place, and then I can finalize the steering column. How would I hold that there without it moving around so I could freaking measure it? I need some sort of magic pillar. What are my chances of this? What if I just guess? Because that would be easier than that. Perfect. Good enough. That's the angle. So the shape I have to cut out of this depends on where I want it to attach to that. I want the APC to be down in yonder. So I gotta cut it off right like that. I gotta curve it and cut. All right, so that's what I gotta cut out of there. Okay, so my saw can actually hold this at that angle. All right, look, it actually worked. So that's the little shape. That's the little shape I cut in there. And then if we push it up, it goes right into there. You see my line? It follows it and it stays on there. Next, I gotta get the link. All right, then I think it'll work. I guess I just peel off the inside, right? I'm gonna try to get this thing attached up here now. Don't really know how I'm doing this. I think I'm just gonna kind of hold it together, then hopefully it all tacks into place. I never got a really great shape for this, so this is gonna take a lot of finagling. So if I could hold it like that and weld it at the same time, that'd be perfect. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and do a bunch in case this isn't right. It'll be way harder to redo it. So now I will reinforce this weld down here and I'm gonna connect it to here somehow to reinforce all this. All right, that's what I'm talking about. So see, I got a nice little pretty curve. These are like 15 foot welds, like maybe from about 10 or 15 feet. They don't look too bad. I might have made that, I might should have attached it inwards more. I was sitting in it and my knees kind of like hit the edge of this because I, I think I'm gonna have to cut those out. Luckily, I really welded them in, but that's okay. I'm getting good at grinding bad stuff out. So now, all right, there we go. Yeah, before I had to hold my knees like that. Now I can like keep them straight up. I gotta fill all that in. Don't worry, it's terrible looking. It'll look even worse when I'm done. I might leave this crappiness here as evidence of my crappiness. I gotta figure out where to put the parking brake. This is my parking brake assembly. I guess it could probably just go right there. It'd be nice to get it up a little bit. So then that would mean I'd have to make it into the other frame. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna put it right there. I mean, I can reach it. I don't know if anybody else will be able to. I got arms of the given. I got this uh, fancy uh, helmet or a uh, hat. So that way I don't set my hair on fire instead of the cotton cloth I was wearing. I got this bracket attached. Where I decided to put it was I made a little thing to hold it up. So this is where handle brake sits. That holds the clopper. No, this is the master cylinder. That holds the master cylinder. Come over here, child. I made this little bracket and the little bracket holds the, holds the caliper, like right there. Where did I put the thingy spins? It's so hard losing stuff every time I turn around. Yeah. So haha, I want two brakes on this. I'm gonna have the foot brake and the uh, emergency brake or the hand brake. I'm gonna put them both on the same disc. I don't know if you're allowed to do that, but that's how I'm gonna do it. But this should be enough to be able to try rolling it down the hill. This is it together. It's got some pretty good front suspension. I'm 200 pounds and that's like not even bottoming out. So that's good. I have the parking brake. It's in a good position for the seat. It doesn't move as much as I would think, but it seems to like roll, it doesn't roll. So that should work. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna roll it down a hill. Oh, it's going pretty good. Oh, look, I get a wheelchair. Ooh. Okay, it stopped. I feel like I should do the little hill first. <laughs> or should we just go straight down my driveway? Well, it's only gonna go downhill. But we could do a little downhill or a big... All right, I'm just gonna go up here a little bit and I'm gonna come flying down at you. Okay. All right, we need a steeper hill. I kind of expected it to go faster than this rolling. <laughs> but it does roll. It does roll. 
I think it'll be a lot more fun with the motor on it. I think the uh, brake is catching a little bit. We're going to try to drag it with the drift trike. I don't know if it'll get any traction. Could we, oh that's right, if we take the take things the, off the wheels on the drift trike, it doesn't really turn at all. No, it's too strong and it just pushes it forward. But I think it'll get it moving. There'll be a lot of skidding. All right, I know what we're going to do. Okay, I'm going to line all this up. Yeah, I'll, I could set the camera down somewhere. Okay. There's currently some quite dangerously sharp areas. I guess some of this is temporary, but when it finally gets put together, we'll, well, I say we, but I haven't done anything. Uh, we'll get some uh, foam or something to wrap around the, sh the uh, edges that potentially could slice your body apart. If you see me wearing rubber gloves in the videos, it's not necessarily because I'm afraid of getting dirty. It's because I cut myself near constantly on these projects. So somehow we're going to use this to drag that. This doesn't have good brakes. This barely has a brake. Why do you need brakes when you can go? Now this keeps falling out because I don't have this secure yet. I will in roughly one Amazon delivery. Should we just tie it or should I have it where I can hold it and then let go if things go terribly wrong? I feel like that go-kart has more friction than the drift trike, so I can't imagine it's going to be that big of a problem. Famous last words. <laughs> okay, who's driving what? I'll drive this. Yeah, all right. All right, so I got the GoPro recording the drift trike. I'll have my camera reporting my face. <laughs> and my neighbors now know I'm completely insane. All right. Oh. All right, I'm gonna see if I can stop. Oh, look, I stopped both of us. All right, that works good. I'm gonna, uh, let's go. Go, see if we can go around this. It's really hard to hold the thing and steer and brake, by the way. All right, I'm ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. All right, see if you can get me around the curve. Break, uh, grind. You can hear the brake grinding a little bit. <laughs> that worked good. On, uh, on the test drive, a couple issues. That, but that's a known issue. And I don't think my caliper's quite right on the back. That's why it's not rolling as easy. It's scraping a little bit. So I either try to adjust it or I hope I can drag it around enough that it'll adjust itself. There's gotta be some way to adjust, right? Not the way I made it. Would you like to try this part? Uh, sure. All right, hold on. Let me get have my feet ordered. Yeah, hold on. All right, ready? Here we go. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this build, please hit the like button. And be sure to subscribe because in the next video, we're going to complete this build and have a fully functional electric go-kart. Please leave a comment if you see any areas for improvement in this build. And be sure to check out our other videos and download Skippy Rock, our awesome pixel art rock skipping adventure, available at your app store for iPhone. Download it now.